Well, one of the things that disturbs me about political correctness, among many things that disturb me about pl political correctness, is its is its grounding in postmodern thought. And the postmodernists don't believe in rationality or debate. They think that's actually part of what they're fighting against. That's part of logocentrism, the idea that there you can bridge the gap between two people with with conversation. They just believe that's a a strategy on a ploy on the part of the people who have power to maintain their power and to justify it by engaging in the pretense of negotiation and and it's it's part and parcel of their philosophy and yes increasingly we're teaching our students that because the postmodernists have invaded they've certainly invaded the education system i mean and, and not just the universities also increasingly through the faculties of education in our culture we always have discussions about rights my rights are being trampled on. My rights are being trampled on. Well, of course they're being trampled on. Everyone's rights get trampled on, and some more than others, obviously. But there isn't a dialogue about responsibility. That's what the dialogue should be about. It's like, yeah, you're oppressed. But you're not as oppressed as a bunch of other people. So are you the oppressor or are you the oppressed? Which one? You see these Ivy League students who are agitating on behalf of the oppressor, or of the oppressed. It's like they're irritated because being in the top one in 1,000 people in the world isn't enough. There's somebody who is better off who's one in 10,000 or one in 100,000. They point to them and say, well, you're the oppressor because, you know, you're 1% you're of the 1% and I'm just the 1%. But, you know, they forget about the starving masses in the rest of the world in relationship to whom, well, they're obviously oppressors. You're the, you're oppressed. Okay, fine. You're the oppressor too. You're the victim. Okay, fine. You're the goddamn perpetrator too. So maybe you should take some responsibility for that. And no, it's not that. We're not going to do that. Someone else is going to be the perpetrator. That's convenient. If it's always someone else, then all the good is on your side. And all the evil is on their side. And once you put all the evil on someone's side, then the next thing to do is to take whatever action against them you see fit. And why not? Because that's where all the evil resides. That just makes you good. What are you going to do? Put up with it? So... And that's, we're busily teaching our young people that as fast as we possibly can. So, and I think it's, 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 it's motivated in part by this postmodern cancer that, whose goal is to gnaw on the roots, gnaw on the roots, gnaw on the roots until the whole corrupt, oppressive, patriarchal system. So that's the tyrannical king, right? That's the mythological projection of the tyrannical king who eats his own children. That's, that's the mythological idea behind the patriarchy. We'll gnaw on that till it falls over. Well, and then what? Well, then, I don't know what, what? The equity utopia will magically arrive. God.